In fact, at one point, we had Tim Murphy, who is the chair of the Energy and Commerce Committee, saying to her, we have an email exchange between Delphi, the company that made the part, and General Motors engineers saying, quote, the Cobalt, one of the recalled cars, is, quote, blowing up in owners' faces when their ignition keys bump with the driver's knees. Why was this not considered a safety issue? Mary Barra saying, quote, I cannot answer that. In fact, as we bring back our panel, she has admitted she didn't read much of the page work that has been uh, submitted by Congress for this, uh, this hearing. We bring back Jeff who is live at a Chicago GM dealership, Gary Gastelou, the automotive analyst at FoxNews.com, and Lauren Fix, the car coach automotive analyst, along with Paul Argenti, professor of corporate communications at Dartmouth Tuck School of Business. Lauren, let me get first to you. Have you been listening? What do you make of how she is doing here? It seems that Congress, including Representative Joe Barton, all over her, calling one of her statements, quote, gobbledygook. You know, I, I, I've been watching intently from, I've been waiting for this to go on. And I listened to her opening statement, and I, I kind of knew, we all knew what she was going to say. But when they were pretty intense uh, as far as their questioning, I want a yes answer, I want a no answer. It's like, wow, this is, it's like a murder trial. It's pretty intense. But there's a lot of things that are, are getting overlooked because I think that Congress doesn't understand how manufacturing occurs. It doesn't occur just by GM producing a part, setting off a blueprint, and then a part comes in, and then they produce. They make it seem like you're building a, a cupcake. It's certainly more involved. And there's five thousands of components in a car, and they certainly don't even have even touched the surface of some of the QC processes that are in place since 1995, such as QS 9000, and then we've got the new standards that are in place. Now, there, there's a lot of questions that I think they're not going to be able to understand when they're saying the initials for these acronyms like PPAP, mm -hmm. which is PPAP, we call it, which is pre-production parts approval process. And I work in manufacturing every day, and I have my whole life, so when I hear this stuff, I hear that there's a lot of discomfort connect from understanding the facts from her being able to answer what's really occurring in her questioning I don't know. I think I'm looking a, a disconnect. for the first time I can't believe I'm saying this in one of these highly technical situations Gary it kind of looks like Congress has done their homework at least some members here and I, are they being appropriately tough yeah, a few of them have definitely dug into the, the paperwork here for sure and have some idea what's going on. Look, the key is this whole point about the specifications versus regulations. Uh, you know, again, uh, there's certain things that a part has to do because that's what the government says it has to do. Then GM has to decide, well, are we going to make it this much better or that much better? And if the part that comes back is only this much better and not that much how better, the part they have that to comes decide, back, well, are we going to make this But how about not? the part that comes back is, quote, blowing up in cobalt drivers' faces? Well, that's where we take it to the next step. I mean, look, if you have a part that doesn't meet internal specifications, does the CEO need to know about that? No. If that part's defective and needs to be recalled, do they need to know about that? Well, they certainly should hear about it in a memo at some point. Professor Argenti, she flat out said, and Jeff Flock pinpointed this right away, uh, Dan Ackerson, the most recent CEO, and Rick Wagner, the previous CEO, no, they wouldn't have known about that. Does that stun you? And how damaging is that to General Motors that the top guy didn't know that there was at least some question repeatedly happening over a part that was causing perhaps some deaths? I think it's stunning that she didn't know about it. I mean, she's trying to act as if this were another General Motors in another time and space. But she was an executive at that company for the last several decades. And, and an engineer, professor. It's very difficult professor. to draw a line and say we're different now. Yeah, and an engineer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and an engineer. I mean, she's held a number of jobs at the company, and for her to say, you know, we don't really know, and we're looking into it, and hiring Ken Feinberg and all of that is great. It's very textbook crisis management 101. But the fact is, I think people are looking for answers, and Congress is appropriately pressing for those answers now. And I would have advised her to come with some artillery today to give us something that would give us some hope that there was a change in what is going to happen in the future. All we've got is that their values have have changed and that worries me more than anything else what kind of value system did they have in place before Jeff Flock Representative Joe Barton just a moment ago and by the way he'll be joining us live in a few minutes he's getting from that room to our cameras said why in the world quote would GM approve a part that didn't even fit its own specifications after she answered it he said with all due respect what you just answered gobbledygook. is gobbledygook yes 
This is going to be the headline that people are going to take away. Lauren makes an interesting point that, yes, as Mary made the point, that there's a difference between meeting specifications and actually being an unsafe part. But I'll tell you, the headline that people are going to take away that come to these dealerships behind me is that GM uses parts that don't meet their own specification in their cars, and not just in the cars that crash or cause problems, but she was unable to say that GM doesn't to this day continue to use parts that don't meet their specifications. That will be the headline that people will take away from this. And I would just say, listening to this, you know, folks in the Congress and their staffs have read all of these documents that GM has submitted. She said she didn't. This leaves the impression that they know more about her company now in this than, situation than she than does. She does. Yeah. And that's not a very good, that is not a very good uh, 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 impression to leave. Uh, let me go back to the professor. One of the things, mm -hmm. and Jeff also jumped on this one too, the second she said it, she was specifically asked, would a, a Dan Ackerson or Rick Wagner, and, and listen, we can put up their pictures. These are the guys who were actually running it, not her. At the time, more importantly, perhaps yep. Rick Wagner, who was right there during all of this, uh, this situation that was cropping up, and she said, no, they wouldn't have known about that. Now, I, I find that stunning. Uh, listen, not that yeah. you compare iPhones to, to cars, but Steve Jobs would have wanted to know if the smallest thing were wrong with his stuff. And Lauren, I understand your point, too, but first to the professor, uh, is it just too complicated when it comes to making a car with so many parts for the top guys to have known about these problems? I mean, if the company has become that complicated that the CEO doesn't know what's going on, we have a major problem. I, I think the, the other thing that is getting lost here is her comment about going from a cost culture to a customer culture, which implies that they were cutting corners in some way. And I think that's devastating information that she revealed herself. And mm -hmm. um, to say that their values weren't aligned with what we're talking about today, these are all things that are going to be parsed over for the next several weeks. And General Motors is in some pretty deep mess right now as a result of her testimony. And Lauren, uh, we had a representative point out the pictures at the back of the, uh, the room where this event is happening. And of course, outside there are families of victims who are protesting. Um, you know, it, it, look at it from that standpoint and tell me what you think. You know, what does GM have to do this second? I mean, they can't be, they can't be thinking this is going very well. It's really sad these people had to die. I mean, we're talking about a $2 part and overall, the saddest part is no matter what the conclusion is, no matter what team of people messed up, there are deaths that you, you can't bring these people back. And, and it, it makes you want to cry. But the, the truth from this is, is the only thing they can do as far as from a PR perspective is she has to be as transparent as possible. She can't be, as the congressman mm -hmm. is saying, gobbledygook. She has to be giving them some sort of answers. Her team is supposed to be prepping her so that she knows everything in that binder, which she apparently had in advance. So they, it's her information. Um, and then on the backside, mm -hmm. they need to have a victim's fund. And right. it may be a couple billion dollars set aside because there's going to be more than one class action suit that's already in oh, place. Yeah, I would think so. As we finish up, Gary, yes or no, when one of the congress members asked who would have decided whether a recall should happen, she said, I don't know. Did that stun you? Uh, to a certain extent, yes. I mean, once it gets to the recall point, you would think that the pretty simple answer there, the CEO, especially when you're talking about accidents and people dying. Listen, thanks to our panel, Jeff Flock, Gary Gastelou, and Professor Paul Argenti. Lauren's going to stay with us more on this developing news. Right now, they are taking a break in the testimony, as are we. Closing bell is ringing in 30 minutes. We do have a strong market here today at the moment. We can't ignore that. And, of course, the big focus is General Motors CEO Mary Barra. As she continues to take extremely pointed and tough questions on Capitol Hill, we've got the Congressman Joe Barton, who just told Mary Barra her answer so far were, quote, gobbledygook. He just walked out of the hearing. He is coming to our cameras. He's right there. Representative, we'll take you in a second. Stay tuned.